Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in this new tutorial we're gonna talk about keypads. These are input devices that you could use them in so many projects. For example you could use them in a door lock system. You could only open up the door when you enter the right password from this keypad. In this short video I'm gonna show you how to hook them up to the Arduino and use them in your projects. So before we get started don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notifications bell so that you don't miss my next videos. And let's jump right into it. So this is called a keypad. As you can see we have few keys that you could use them in your project. But if you have a different keypad don't worry. They work pretty much the same. For example, I have this one that has different keys and the only difference is the number of rows and columns. For example, this one consists of four rows and four columns. So let me bring a paper so that you could understand how this thing work. Basically, it has four rows, as I said, and four columns. And these are simple wires. That's why you could find this keypad for less than one dollar. So it's very cheap because it consists of simple wires. And a key is an intersection of two wires. For example, this is the first key that is labeled one. And once you click on it, it's going to connect the row with the column. For example, we can hook up these rows and columns to the digital pins from number 9 until number 2 then we can output 5 volts using the digital write command and loop through all of the columns first we're gonna read the voltage from this pin and because we have pressed this key we're gonna read 5 volts but if you read from the other columns you will get 0 volt but if you are asking why we don't use the push buttons as you can see, this is a push button, and I've talked about it in our previous videos. The first advantage is that whenever you use the keypad, you're gonna need eight digital pins. But if you use push buttons, four by four, which means 16 push buttons, in such case, you will use 16 pins because you need to connect one leg to the GND and the other one to the digital pin. Also, they come with a good look way as you can see, we have different colors and each of these are labeled with numbers or letters. Anyways, let's connect this keypad. Then I'm going to show you how to use the keypad library to get the pressed key. Basically, you will need few jumper wires, male to male. And I'm going to connect the first four rows to the digital pins number 9, 8, 7 and 6 then we're gonna hook up the columns to the digital pins number 5 4 and 3 if you have 3 columns but if you have 4 columns you will need to connect the last one to the digital pin number 2 so let's start by connecting the first row using this jumper wire I'm gonna hook it up to the digital pin number 9 the second row goes to the digital pin number 8 and so on. And I think I forgot to mention how to get the rows and the columns. So these wires are separate. We have two sections. The four wires on the left side are the rows and the other four are the columns. Now we're gonna connect the first column to the digital pin number five. The second goes to digital pin number 4, then number 3, and if you have the keypad that has 4 columns, you're gonna need to connect the last one to the digital pin number 2, and that's how we can hook up this keypad. Now we're gonna open up the Arduino IDE and install the keypad library so that we can check which key we have pressed. 
first I'm gonna open up the Arduino IDE. Then you will need to download the keypad library using tools, manage libraries, and let's search for keypad. Then you need to search for the same name, keypad. So let's go down below. And it is this library that has the name keypad. Also, we have the GitHub link. Make sure to hit the install button. For me, it's already installed. Then you will have few examples. To open one of them, you could go to File, then Examples. And let's search for the keypad library. It is this one. As you can see, we have different examples. I'm going to use the first one, which is Custom Keypad. And this is the project. First, you will need to include the library using include keypad.h. Then we have to change the rows and the columns. For me, I have four rows and four columns. Then we have a matrix, which represents the different keys. For me, the first one is the number one. So you will need to change this matrix a little bit. Then I have the key two. And on the right side, I have the key that is labeled A, then B, C and D. Here I have the number zero. Then we have the hash sign, the star key. And finally, we need to change the digital pins that we have used. First, we have the row pins. For me, I've used the pins number nine, then eight, seven, and six. For the columns, I've used the digital pins number five, four, three, and two. And that's all what you need. Then we have created the keypad object. It is called custom keypad. And we have all of the informations like the different keys, the rows, columns, the number of rows and the number of columns. After that, we have a predefined function which returns the key that we have pressed and it is stored inside this variable. The type is char or character. Of course, you could change the name to C, for example. Then you will get the custom key using the custom keypad dot get key function. And if you don't press any of the keys, this returns null. That's why we can check if we have a key using if C. In such case, we can print it using the serial monitor. And we pass in the custom key, which I have called C. Now we can upload the code. And let's open up the serial monitor using tools. Serial monitor. Make sure that we have the same baud rate. I'm going to change it to 9600, which we have used to set up our serial monitor under the setup function using serial.begin with the baud rate 9600. So let's go back to the serial monitor again. Then let's try to press one of the keys, like number one. As you can see, we have one printed on the serial monitor. Also, we could use the other keys, like the D key. So I think that's pretty much it, guys, for this video. I hope you like it. If you have any question or comment, make sure to put it under the comment section down below. And before you close this video, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell icon. I appreciate that. And I will see you in the next one.